Hey, Todd here, messing around in the studio, cleaning things up, and I'm realizing that I've just got so much film laying around in these tubs. You know, I've got Ilford and Fuji and T-Max P3200. I can't even remember what I needed that for back in the day. But it just got me thinking, and a lot of, a lot of chrome film here and color neg. I've just got uh, a ton of it here that I need to start shooting and burning through. It's, it's all outdated. But it got me thinking that I've got this old camera. Well, it's kind of a remake that this Japanese company remade it back in 1999. And I think I bought mine right, right around there, 2000, 1999, by this Japanese company that remade or bought the Voigtlander name and made this Bessa L camera which was kind of the poor man's Leica or Leica-like camera back in the day. And so I, I, I dug around and found it, had to do a little bit of digging here to find it, kind of had it stowed away, and I've maybe shot two rolls of film through the thing ever. So I'm gonna do a little shooting with it. And that, that got me thinking maybe in all my other old cameras that I've got laying around here, I might have another Voigtlander hiding in here someplace that I could do a little side-by-side -side comparison, but I didn't find anything at the studio or at my house, and I happened to be up at my dad's, and my mom, when she was around, was a, an antique dealer for quite some time, and she would get me all kinds of old cameras, uh, which I have laying around, but on the counter, in one of their spots up there, they had another Voigtlander, so I took it from my dad, and uh, I'm gonna, and it was a Vito, a Vito B, which they made in 1954, the Voigtlander. And neither one of these cameras are range finders. They're just kind of you get to view through, and then you've got to guess where the focus is, where you're, where, where you think, you know, if you're 20 feet or five feet or two feet, whatever it may be. Um, that's the way you focused on these cameras. So let's take a quick look at the cameras themselves. <laughs> That was a quick look at the cameras. Got the Bessel L here. It's a fixed 25 millimeter uh, F4 to F22. It's got a shutter speed up to 2000. And they put in a, a meter too system on the back here, which goes green light. Uh, you get a red light, green light, where, wherever you're at. And um, 2.5 feet to infinity on the focus. Yeah, and I, again, I think I bought mine in, in 2000, right after these things, they reintroduced this camera. And then I've got the Vito B, which is a fixed 50. Uh, highest shutter speed on this is 300. And it's an F35 to 5, or no, what is it? 35 to uh, F16, 35 to F16 on this guy. So we're gonna shoot side by side and have a little fun, do a little comparison. See how they look? Just basically go out and shoot some film is what I'm really kind of anxious to do. We're going to head up the Columbia Gorge to uh, Crown Point on Scenic Highway 30, Route 30. Really kind of curvy, windy, narrow road with a bunch of waterfalls. So my wife, me and my wife are going to head up there and uh, shoot some shots and, and see what we get. Come back, take it to the lab get it processed. I'm not processing anything here in the studio. That Those days are done. I do have all the equipment to process, don't have the chemicals, but uh, I'm not doing that at all. So getting that to the lab, then we'll bring it back here and do some scans and look at what we get. So let's get on the road. <music> the Voigtlanders out, both of the, the newer one and the old one up here at the Vista House, Crown Point, and it's unbelievably windy, and we're getting some shots, but it is super windy and super cold. Good little view here. Oh my gosh, it is freezing with this wind is terrible. You crazy 
people. No hats, no nothing. That, that was so cold. Freezing out there. 30 degrees, 35 mile an hour wind. Didn't so get not 30 degrees. No, yeah, not 30 degrees, 20 degrees. Yeah. My hands are so cold. It's reads beautiful views, but just way too cold to do anything. Yeah, I got a few shots, but uh, oh. it's just too cold, too windy up here. Oh. Crazy cold. <laughs> Gotta get the heater off. It made the car. my battery go low. Oh, man. <laughs> Okay, now we stopped at some falls to uh, where it's not so windy. Get some shots down here. Old school uh, meter working for me as well. That was too damn cold and too damn windy. Really didn't get what I wanted to get up there. Was totally unprepared for the wind and the cold, how cold it was. And it was cold out, but I didn't think I'd need gloves and, and all that to shoot with those, these cameras. Um, it's definitely fun getting back to shooting film and focusing and using basic daylight exposure to, and that old meter was super cool, but didn't really get what I wanted. So I'm gonna head to this graffiti wall and shoot some more stuff there to finish out these rolls. Just finished shooting, got both rolls of film out of the cameras. It's starting to rain again, no wind today. Just crashed my drone though into a fence where I was shooting. What a bummer. Uh, I think it's okay, but uh, it's pouring with rain again now, so I'm not gonna test it right now. Just get to the lab, get this stuff processed, uh, then look at the film and make some scans. So off to the lab. Got the film back from the lab. I've done my scans and been messing around here in Photoshop with them, kind of dialing them in a little bit. Loving the grain of this T-Max 400. I've just kind of forgotten about grain, the look of the grain of T-Max. I mean, I've, I've messed around with some this program, uh, Dehancer, which is really a nice, uh, a nice app on your phone now and a plugin that you can use in Final Cut and DaVinci. So it, it's really good, but to actually shoot the film again, I'm, I'm, I really loved it. It was really fun. And, and looking at it and scanning it and looping it and all the stuff I used to do for years and years, um, I kind of really missed. And here's a look at some of the images from the, uh, the 25 millimeter, the Bessa L and we'll look at those right now. Oh, and it did a really cool thing, which was a mistake, but when I was winding it, it didn't wind all the way, but still let me, uh, it just didn't advance all the way and it double exposed this shot, which is right here. And it just did kind of a cool thing on accident, a mistake, but a, a happy accident. So it, those were uh, shot from that one. And then from the Vito, Vito B, these are the shots from them we're looking at now and it, they're both cameras virtually the same. It's hard to tell, you know, how sharp anything is with this big grain and these T-Max 400, but it, it really brought back a lot of memories of shooting with film and how much fun that is and having to, you know, figure out the exposure and using basic daylight settings and uh, working with that. So yeah, I mean, if you've got a film camera, I highly recommend shooting some film through it. It is a kind of a bummer to go and get it processed now. 
uh, the you know I've just you get so spoiled by digital having it be there right away to mess around with um, but I've got all this film here I'm just gonna keep shooting shooting more of it and just having fun just playing around with it and burning it through rather than it just sitting here gathering dust so if you can get out there and shoot some film I highly recommend it it's uh, it kind of brings back the joy of photography a little bit and uh, yeah till next time I'm out. Thanks for watching.